the Department of Energy recently teamed up with a California company. The goal is to produce oil and biomass for renewable energy on a large scale by using, get this, algae, essentially pond scum. CNNMoney.com's Poppy Harlow has our energy fix from New York. Oh, explain this one, Poppy. Good to see you. <laughs> you know, hey, Tony, that was my exact reaction when I, got, yeah. uh, when I got word of this. We decided to investigate it, and it's right. Last month, the DOE's Idaho National Laboratory signed a research pact with a company called Origin Oil. It's a small, publicly traded company. You may not have heard of it, but what it does is it grows algae in a brewery-like setting using what it calls a helix bioreactor. Take a look at that video there. The idea, extract oil from large amounts of algae, and you don't need the sun or a pond to grow that algae. Take a look. Well, it turns into kind of like pea soup. And then we take some of the water out of it, and then we run it through a cracking process, which uses uh, ultrasound and microwave that is tuned to the frequency of the oil. And uh, the oil floats to the top, and we draw it off. All right, well, it's not as easy as that. It's a pretty difficult process. The company, though, Tony says this is carbon neutral because algae actually feeds off of carbon dioxide, essentially pulling it right out of the air, converting it into oil, Tony. Well, Poppy, it sounds like science fiction, but will this uh, technology be able to, let's see, power homes and fill our cars with oil, what, made from algae? It's a great question. What good is it to us if we can't use yeah. it, right? I asked the CEO this morning that exact question when he was here with us on the set. He said it could be four or five years at least before it's even used on a small level by factories in order to reduce their carbon footprint. He says it's going to be even longer than that before it would be available to the general public. And here's why. There's a lot of challenges, some big obstacles to tackle, namely the ability to produce algae oil in mass quantities. This is just a very small scale right now. That is where the deal with the energy department that you mentioned kicks in. It is exploring whether or not this is cost effective and viable for the masses. You should know the company did warn its investors that algae may never achieve commercial viability. That's when the company went public in 2007, they said that. So people are taking a risk here. And the relatively small amount of oil produced by algae can be really, really tough to get to. Uh. If they can crack the code, though, they may have a leg up on the rest of the competition. Crack. Now this is the third generation biofuels. First generation was, you know, food crops. Second generation is not food, but it still uses land and water. Things like switchgrass and forestry products. The third generation doesn't need land, likes dirty water. Uh, it's not a food crop. It grows very fast. It loves CO2. Algae really is the candidate for what we need in this country for biofuels. All right, it's just one option. Uh, there are many more alternatives out there. As you know, do some more research, see what you mm -hmm. think. More alternatives on CNNMoney.com. But very interesting. We'll it is. What, what happens from it? All right, Poppy, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, tonight, CNN presents Black in America.